Today, I embark on a stimulating journey from Lisboa to Porto aboard the fastest train in Portugal, the Alpha Service Tilting Train, reaching speeds of up to 220 km per hour. I explore the train, the route, schedules, prices, and everything else you need to know for this 336 km adventure. Come along! Hi and welcome to Lisboa. Take a look at the imposing side facade of Santa Apollonia Station, recently painted in this striking red hue. This was once the main entrance for travelers arriving by ship, as the river used to extend right up to the station. Unfortunately, the front entrance is currently blocked due to nearby construction and those of us eager to enter through the front door have to navigate this narrow alley sandwiched between the station and the construction fence. Upon entering the main atrium, we have the ticket offices, large departure and arrival boards, and the entrance to a lovely hotel that occupies space on the first and second floors of the station, formerly used as offices by CP and, more recently, IP, the infrastructure manager. Also in the main atrium, there are these conveniently located luggage lockers, very useful for anyone in need of secure storage. Moving forward, there are also shops of different sorts, many still closed at this early hour. Further down the hall, a waiting area, a cafe and even a pizza parlor. If instead, we pass under the boards at the main atrium, we can directly access the platforms and the trains. The areas that we just saw are to our left, behind these doors. Santa Apollonia can be reached by train, car, bus, taxi, or the blue line of the metro. Given that my train, Alpha Service number 123, is already parked at the platform, let's take this opportunity to see it and find out a little about the class, the Portuguese version of the Italian ETR 480 tilting trains. It's part of a batch of 10, manufactured by Fiat Ferroviaria with electronics by Siemens and final assembly at the Sorfame plant in Portugal. They entered service between 1999 and 2001 and have been operating CP's flagship Alpha service ever since. Between 2017 and 2019, these trains underwent a complete remodeling, during which they received this stunning new livery and a beautiful interior, which we'll see in just a moment. It's time to go inside and check out the interior while there are fewer passengers on board. Upon boarding, there are these luggage racks equipped with a coin-operated security system. The first-class section features an open area in a 2 plus 1 configuration, with space for luggage overhead and TVs for onboard entertainment. I want a seat on the left side of the train, where there are two seats together, instead of the other side with the single seats. The interior design exudes a sense of tranquility and timelessness, which I find particularly appealing. At the seat, there's a coat hook. A pocket for storing items, where I forgot something, but fortunately was able to retrieve it later in the day, and a well-built table with a pleasing finish and capable of holding a 17-inch laptop. Of notice, the legroom, which is quite generous. At the bottom, there's a footrest, a bin, and one power socket for each seat. A couple USB ports would be nice to have as well. Pressing this button reclines the seat making it even more comfortable. The entertainment system controls are next to the recline button. There are three radio channels and the fourth is connected to the TVs. Overhead, we find these individual reading lights. The blinds are electric and make a good job at blocking the sun. Let's go for a walk and see the rest of the train. Next to the first class, or Conforto, according to CP, there is a bar area that, although quite beautiful, is relatively small in size. The design of the bar seems intended to motivate passengers to bring their food back to their seats. This area does not have any seating, and the tables by the windows are not the most convenient I've seen. Although there's a button to open them, these doors also open automatically when someone approaches. Next to the bar, on the other side, is the second class section. 
There are luggage stacks with that box on the top shelf. What's the box used for? If you know, please say so in the comments. Second class is in a 2 plus 2 configuration but other than that with only minor differences compared to first class. The seats are identical with the same amenities except for the fact that they have a shared armrest, the table has a less attractive finish and there's a net pocket instead of the leather one found in first class. There's the same bin and, like in first class, one power socket per seat. Also, of course, the same electrically operated sun blinds. These seats are, indeed, quite elegant and comfortable. Going back, I take another look at the bar before getting to my seat prior to departure. Notice the food carts used for the first class in seat service. Departure is at 9.01, with a slight one minute delay. As we leave the station, our train passes through Lisboa's main facility for passenger services. This facility includes parking areas, as well as spaces for cleaning and conducting light maintenance on passenger cars. It was also from this general area that the first train in Portugal departed on October 28, 1856, marking the beginning of the Portuguese rail adventure. It's time now to look at today's itinerary. Our 336 kilometers trip takes us from Lisboa to Porto with stops at Coimbra B, Aveiro and Vila Nova de Gaia, near Porto, scheduled to take three hours, but in reality, a little longer than that. Less than 10 minutes after Santa Apollonia, we reach Oriente, currently Lisboa's main station. As it's very easily accessible, a majority of passengers embark here. Note the two Sintra Line Class 2300 parked in Lines 2 and 3, waiting for their next service. Not long after Oriente, the train reaches its maximum speed of 220 km per hour, which is currently the maximum speed in Portugal. In the panels located above the doors in every car, there's a speedometer along with other useful information. Note, also, the time and exterior temperature of 31 degrees Celsius so early in the morning. Soon, a lady with the food cart comes along. I just have a mid-morning snack which sets me back 3 euros 10 cents. Shortly thereafter, the first of many speed restrictions appears on today's trip. As a result of ongoing construction and maintenance along various parts of the route, these restrictions and the associated delays are an integral part of this traveling experience. Although they may be inconvenient when being carried out, these works ultimately lead to improvements that are well liked by passengers and improve train operations. There are several cars with track materials showing the scale of the ongoing works. Entron Comento, 106 kilometers from Lisboa and which we pass without stopping, is Portugal's primary rail center, featuring extensive freight facilities and workshops that handle major train maintenance and repair. Additionally, is home to Portugal's National Railway Museum, where I recently filmed a video. Finally, Entron Comento, meaning junction in Portuguese, is also where the lines to the Spanish border at Elvis and to Castelo Branco and Guarda branch off. There will be videos showcasing both these lines in the near future, the first as part of a trip from Lisboa to Madrid by train and the second due to its scenic beauty.
The many speed restrictions continue as we pass, now, slowly but non-stop through Alfarello's, 198 kilometers from Lisboa or slightly less than two hours into the trip. The Mondego River signals our approach to Coimbra, the renowned student city that is home to one of the oldest universities in the world, established in 1290. With a population of around 140,000 inhabitants is a city worth visiting. As for my train, it's already showing a delay of 17 minutes as we arrive to Coimbra B, the main station serving the city. I wanted to wait until having tested the onboard free internet for a while before mentioning it. It's quite good, offering fast speeds, but with occasional spottiness. Overall, it works fine and is a welcome addition to the service. With the picturesque backdrop of the Douro River and its bridges, let me tell you about schedules and prices. On weekdays there are 10 Alpha services in each direction, slightly less on weekends, with many extending to Braga, in the north, and Faro, in the south. A link to the schedules on CP's website is on the description below. In terms of prices, first-class tickets cost 47 euros and 40 cents, while second-class costs 33 euros and 90 cents for a one-way trip purchased on the day of travel. However, significant savings are available for tickets purchased in advance or round-trip ones. Tickets can be purchased on CP's website or through its app with a simple process which includes the option to choose one seat. As we arrive at Porto Campanha, with a delay of 21 minutes, I'd like to share my overall impressions of this trip. The train is beautiful, comfortable, and the service and prices are quite satisfactory. However, the three-hour travel time from Santa Apollonia to Campanha, reminiscent of the mid-1980s with class 2600 locomotives and Corail cars, felt a bit too lengthy, especially with the added delays. Despite this, I would definitely consider using the service again. Hopefully, once the ongoing works on the track are completed, the delays will be minimized, and perhaps, the schedule could be adjusted to shorten the travel time. I have the feeling that I'm forgetting something in the train, and as a matter of fact I do. I want to thank the efforts of all CP staff who helped me retrieve my forgotten belonging later that day. Thank you! Exiting the station is an easy affair thanks to the convenient, albeit crowded at times, underpass that spans the entire width of the station, providing easy access to all platforms, with escalators, lifts and regular stairs. Once through the underpass, passengers can head to the main building and step out onto the bustling street to catch buses, taxis, or simply take a leisurely walk to their final destinations. Thank you for staying till the end. If you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Your support is very helpful and means a lot. Thank you for being here and I hope to see you on my next trip.